Did you manage to spot them all? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the Top 10 DC Movie Easter Eggs. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're looking at the coolest secrets, subtle details, references, and knowing winks in films based on DC properties. We'll be looking at all live-action DC movies, and not just those of the DCEU. We will not, however, be including obvious teasers, like the Joker's playing card at the end of Batman Begins. I'll look into it. Number 10. Victor Zaz, Batman Begins In my opinion, Mr. Zaz is as much a danger to himself as to others. A young Victor Zaz has gotten plenty of screen time on the television series Gotham, but you've probably missed his brief appearance in the first film of Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy. If you're unfamiliar with the comics, Zaz probably just seemed like a random criminal. Anyone that knows Batman's rogues gallery inside and out, however, will recognize Zaz as a notorious serial killer who tallies his kills with cuts on his own flesh. In a wonderful little nod to the fans, Zaz's trademark scars can fleetingly be seen on his neck when he exits his prison cell. Like the Joker, we're sure each of his scars has a colorful backstory. You wanna know how I got these scars? Number 9. The John F. Ostrander Federal Building – Suicide Squad Sir, Midway City's under attack. As fun as it is to see comic book movies paying homage to their source material in subtle ways, it's particularly heartwarming when the artist behind that work gets an acknowledgement. Robert Conagher and Ross Andrew created the first comic book iteration of The Suicide Squad, but it shares little resemblance to the version people know and love today. The whole gang of supervillains forced to work covert ops for a government agency thing? We have John Ostrander to thank for that. And in recognition of its maker, the Suicide Squad film immortalized Ostrander by naming a building after him in Midway City, the building from which the squad must rescue Amanda Waller. How are you not dead? Number 8. Aquaman PJ's Superman Returns this film's nostalgic approach to Superman unfortunately failed to revitalize the franchise as Warner Brothers had hoped. Though we never got to see the planned 2009 sequel, we did get a nod to a larger universe in the form of Lois Lane and Clark Kent's biological son. Or rather, his pajamas, which are adorned with cartoon images of Aquaman. Sometimes you feel like an outcast, but you'll never be alone. For eagle-eyed audience members, this was a cute throwback to the more innocent days of comics, before Aquaman got gritty. But one can't help but wonder, within the world of the film, is Aquaman a fictional hero, or is Superman's fellow Justice League member alive and unabashedly big on self-promotion? Sadly, we'll never know. Arthur Curry, the Aquaman. It's on him. Number 7. Superman Serial Cameos – Superman really blame Warner Brothers for wanting to recapture the magic of the original Superman film? The big screen debut of Christopher Reeve as the Man of Steel is the definition of heartwarming and hopeful. As classic as this film feels now, when it was shot in the 1970s, Soup's already had a long history, allowing the filmmakers to express a little nostalgia of their own. Golly! I saw a boy at the rim as fast as the train! Faster even! <laughs> Lois Lane, you have a writer's gift for invention. When Clark is running alongside the train carrying Lois Lane and her family, her parents are played by none other than Noelle Neal and Kirk Allen, the original Lois and Clark from the 1948 serialized Superman film. Initially a deleted scene, it was added back into the film for home releases. Uh, but... Lois, please read your book. Number 6. Clayface's Maker – The Dark Knight Rises Despite setting Batman in a much more realistic world, Christopher Nolan still delivered his own spin on a number of classic Bat villains. For some of the otter iconic characters, however, there was simply no good workaround. And yet, Nolan managed to give some of these inhuman rogues a nod nonetheless. Clayface never would have worked in this grounded superhero universe. So instead, Nolan delivered a version of the man who created Clayface in the animated series, Roland Daggett. I want him dealt with. Although named John Daggett in the film, there's no denying the resemblance, since they're both business adversaries of Wayne, who turn to villains to achieve their goals. What the hell is going on? Number 5. The Costumes of Riddler and Two-Face – Batman and Robin 
Well, say what you will about this franchise ending film, but what it lacked in quality, it more than made up for in bat credit cards. While Joel Schumacher's campy approach to Batman is loathed by many fans, it's hard to deny the fact that Jim Carrey and Tommy Lee Jones were, in all honesty, a lot of fun as Riddler and Two-Face. That's never gonna heal if you don't stop picking. <laughs> Let's see if you bleed green. Sure, they were over the top, but they pulled it off with maniacal style. Sadly, the same cannot be said for Arnie and Uma as Mr. Freeze and Poison Ivy. In a movie with few high notes, the sight of Two-Face and the Riddler's respective outfits in the property locker at Arkham was a real treat. Number 4. Keep Calm and Call Batman – Man of Steel Whether you appreciate his cinematic take on DC characters or not, it must be acknowledged that few directors in the comic book movie genre have more genuine love for comics than Zack Snyder. If you need more proof, look no further than the many little on-screen gifts he's left for fans. As the first film in the DCEU, Man of Steel made one thing very clear – this Superman does not exist in a bubble. One of the many signs of a larger shared universe, a poster can be seen hanging in the building Superman crashes into. It reads, Keep Calm and Call Batman. Turns out, Batman was already on the scene. Number 3. LexCorp – Man of Steel as we were saying, this is a film overflowing with Easter eggs, but the skyline of Metropolis appears to have been Zack's greatest canvas for sharing his geek love of DC Comics. It features various signs and business names pulled straight from the comics, including Star Labs, Utopia Casino, WGBS, and even Blaze Comics, the fictional publisher behind Booster Gold Comics within the DC Comics universe. LexCorp, however, is a big one. Luther himself didn't appear until 2016's Batman vs Superman, but he is a big presence in Metropolis. We see his logo not just on his building, but on multiple big rigs too. Number 2. The iconic Action Comics cover brought to life – Superman Returns Hey, nostalgia might not always translate to massive returns at the box office, but as far as Easter eggs are concerned, throwbacks are solid gold. Published in 1938, Action Comics No. 1 introduced the world to what would become one of the most iconic figures in pop culture history. This comic book has gone on to become the most valuable of its kind, and by extension, arguably one of the most recognizable images in comics. In a brilliant homage to the source material, Superman Returns brought this iconic moment in history to life by having Brandon Routh's Superman hold a car above his head in the exact same pose. Are you alright, miss? Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. What are you smiling about, Captain? Nothing, sir. They became the king and queen of Gotham City. Number 1. Bruce Wayne and His Parents – Watchmen oh, the times are We've said it before and we'll say it again – Zack Snyder loves his comic books. Another highly divisive film from the director, Watchmen was described for many years by those in the industry as an impossible film adaptation. In the highly stylized opening montage, we see the original Night Owl punching out a gunman. In the background, a well-dressed couple exits into the alleyway from a theater, where on a poster, we can see the word Gotham. Seem familiar? Years before telling the tragic story of their death in a similarly dramatic opening montage, Snyder actually saved Thomas and Martha Wayne from their fate in Crime Alley with this epic Easter egg. Oh, the times they are changing. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.